I want to touch on something this morning. I'll try to move briefly. I've got a lot of scripture. I'll never get to it all, but I just want to get a, gather around the idea. Uh, there's a scripture in Matthew, the uh, uh, 22nd chapter. I'm going to quote it to you here. As I'm quoting this, I want you to uh, turn with me, if you will, to Romans, the 12th chapter. Matthew 22 and 29 says, You do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. I said, you, do not err, you, you will err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. I have used this, and I'm not saying this because he's here this morning, but many of you know this illustration that I've given. Boyd sitting back there, he has the ability in his mind to take a 15-speed transmission apart and stack all the gears up, go on vacation, stay going for 30 days, and come back and put the thing back together. Do you know why? Because he's got a gift. He understands how that thing operates. He understands this gear does this and this gear does that. He understands that. I don't understand that. That's new. I can't even get the thing out of the truck. But he understands that. What I want you to understand here for the next few moments is that sometimes what you need in life is just a little understanding. You may not understand the hell that you're going through. You may not understand the battle that you've been fighting. You may not understand a whole lot of stuff. I, I for one, sometimes uh, think that I might like to have a little more understanding of all the evil and stuff. But then when you trace the thing back to the garden and you begin to understand how we fell there and what really was given up in the garden, you do get a little more understanding. And sometimes Sometimes the only way that you can uh, have any peace of mind about it is when you read the end of the book and you get some good understanding of God's Word that says, hey, we win. I've read the end of it, and we win. We're all going to end this thing victorious, but there'd be nothing worse than a man sitting there, tore up on the side of the road with his transmission and a million parts, and he's got absolutely no hope of understanding anything. And that man that's in that position, the only hope that he's got is to find somebody that does have a little understanding that can help him get through his hard time and I feel come by here this morning to help you through your hard time to let you know that uh, uh, maybe you don't understand everything but you know what faith is you know what the evidence of faith is it's unseen amen and we uh, we will err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God if you'll pick up your Bible and just read it and get some understanding of what we're truly fighting against you can take you know Brad Hendricks made a statement here not too long ago that I, that I love him and hammering it ever since. He said, if you ever, if you want to always defeat the devil, if you never want to get defeated of the devil, never get in the ring with him. When you understand through understanding of God's word, amen, what we're fighting against, that we're fighting against principalities and rulers and spiritual wickednesses and high places, amen. The, 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 I want to zero this down just a little bit more. Sometimes, let's say for instance, you're standing here minding your own business and somebody pulls up and they begin to cuss you out. All of a sudden, the first thing you do, you're mad. All of a sudden, your, your, your emotions, everything's going wild. And then all of a sudden, the, the good spirit of slap comes upon you and you're wanting to take somebody by the throat. But what you need to understand is that's what Satan's wanting. Satan's wanting you to get down on his level. When you understand this thing is a spiritual, there's something on the inside of that thing that's driving that very thing that's happening. Now, when you understand, there's a whole kingdom here. Here's what you get through some understanding. You'll understand through this Word of God that everything that I can see is temporal. That brings things into perspective for me. It brings a lot of good understanding when I understand that everything I can see is temporal and that what I can't see is eternal. And then I understand through the Word of God that everything that I can see was made by what I can't see which then I understand the connection of faith. That the evidence of faith is unseen. You're praying, nothing's happened. You don't see anything, praise God. You face work and keep praying. Amen? Amen. Even You're not meant to see it. You don't walk by feelings. You don't walk by sight. You walk by one thing and that's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes, amen, the greatest understanding that you could ever get is that I need faith and I need to move by faith and that I not need to just talk about faith, but I ought to be walking faith because faith without works is what? It's dead. Absolutely dead. Sometimes just some good understanding. You do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. In the book of Romans, I want to read you this. I want to help you. I'm going to spend, try my next 10 minutes to spend just to help you. This is what the Word of God says in Romans 12. And verse 1 said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at the next one. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You need your mind renewed in the scriptures of God. You need your mind renewed in this thing, because if you don't get them renewed, hell's going to have a field day with you. It's a terrible thing for a man to be out in the middle of the desert and have no knowledge of northeast, south, or west, and sitting there with no knowledge, no understanding of how to get out of it, how to get home. He'll sit out there in the desert and wander around and around in circles and he's absolutely lost and eventually he'll die. You take a man, put him on the sea, don't give him any navigation tools. He don't have the wisdom to look at the stars. He does it. He'll, he'll be tossed to and fro all of his life and eventually he'll wind up dead. I've come by to tell you that it's a good idea for you to get a hold of some wisdom. It's a good idea for you to seek that because it's the principal thing in the Word of God. It'll do you good and it'll help you too just to get a little bit of understanding about what's going on here. A little bit of understanding will let me understanding why all the hell and the school shootings and I'll get a little bit of understanding of God's word. I'll understand there's an evil at work in this nation and I'll understand through a little bit of uh, scripture reading and a little bit of word of God, amen, just exactly where the fight really is. It would make totally nonsense for any two countries that were at war to turn around and shoot their weapons in the opposite direction if they had no earthly idea who they were fighting against. And Satan is slap full of trickery. That's how he got in this thing. He deceived over there in the garden and he's still deceiving. You put a question mark where God put a period. God said, leave the tree alone. Leave it alone. He put a period there. The Satan came along and said, hath God said, and he put a question mark and he's still doing the same thing today, doing everything that he can to get you to doubt God's word, amen, to get you in a place of unbelief and to get you in a place to where you have no knowledge, you have no wisdom, you have no understanding and you're running around, you're mad at everybody else and we're fighting amongst ourselves and while we're in here fighting amongst ourselves and dealing with our emotions and our pity parties and Satan's having a field day with us and while Satan has entered into your marriage and while he's entered into your parents and everything else and while he's fighting y'all and got y'all pitted against one another, he's gotten you and you have no knowledge, you have no understanding, you have no wisdom that the war is not between us. We're not to be fighting amongst ourselves, amen. That whenever I see a dear brother fall that I am to take heed lest I fall I must understand through this word of God that maybe he's fighting some demonic attack that I know absolutely nothing about and the best thing I can do is find me a place of prayer and get on my face and pray for him rather than running him in the ground. Amen. Let that thing show up at my house the very next week. Do you see what some good understanding and what some good wisdom and good knowledge will do in the word of God? Take heed, the Bible said, lest you fall. This Bible guards against pride. I mean it guards against it on every regard, any way you can think of it. It says, get it out of your life, have absolutely nothing to do with it, because the very moment that you swell up in pride in any area, hell is going to attack that thing. Do you see what good wisdom that is? You see, used to, I'd get prideful, I'd get mad real quick. I mean, somebody pull up beside me and pass me on the road, I'd get mad, but you know what helped me? A little bit of wisdom, a little bit of understanding to know that whenever I flare up in that pride and I get to swell up in that thing, all of a sudden I know that that's ground that the enemy's going to enter in. I know that that's ground that the enemy is going to come in and collect every bit of that for worship and use that against not only me but my family and everybody else. A little bit of wisdom. You know what that made me do? It made me cut it off in Jesus' name. Just a little bit of wisdom and understanding of how Satan works and how he comes against you and your family will cause you to cut a whole lot of stuff off when you realize that you're doing nothing but giving him ground in your life. And I assure you today, mark my words, hell will not take no more ground than what's given it. I said it cannot take any more ground than what's given it. So he comes in. They told the story. I want to tell you this. It may help you. So a guy was in a vision dream or something. He saw a, a crossroads and he looked and both ways looked exactly the same. And he began to study one very carefully and as he could study the one, he saw two lines on the side of the image and he looked and saw some fingers and it was somebody holding up a picture. I'm telling you that hell's coming to steal, kill and destroy. Hell's coming to deceive and everything else to tell you that uh, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't need to seek God. Hold on to your pride. Nobody owes you nothing. I'm, I mean, it, everybody owes you something. Hold on to your pride. Hold on to your bitterness. There'll be no repercussions. There'll be nothing. And the whole time he's using that to tire everything down. And for the most part, you and I are fighting against ourselves. And this Bible is very clear, even when talking about Satan said that a house divided cannot stand. The house and your house will never stand if it's divided against itself. Understand what you're dealing with. For the most part, it's nothing but a demonic attack in so many ways. And understand what that thing 
thing is, see for what it is and humble yourself and get on your knees before God, amen, because I assure you that every devil in hell trembles at the very name of Jesus, but you must ask yourself the question, why are they not trembling in my life? Have I give the thing right? Have I give it inroad to my house? Have I give it inroad into my house? Some of you have got things in your house you need to throw away. Some things you've brought reproach to the name of God. Some things you're holding on to. And hell's using that thing to get in. I'm going to give you an example. You take some pride. Take some bitterness. You get bitter and envy. I want to tell you what bitterness is like. It's like drinking poison, hoping somebody else dies, and it kills nobody but you. And it's that bitterness. Somebody wronged you a long time ago. Somebody offended you. Somebody's hurt you really bad. Somebody's messed with you as a child or something, and you're holding on to that bitterness. And the whole world out there tells you that you have a right to hold on, that you have a right to be bitter. But this Word of God says that if you from your heart do not forgive, that your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. And if you need anybody's forgiveness here this morning, it's Jesus. Amen. I need His grace and I need His mercy in my life and I understand through wisdom of God's Word that the only way I can get that mercy, the only way I can obtain God's grace, the only person, anybody in this Word that God would deal with is that man that's humble and contrite before God, is the one that's willing to humble themselves and say, God, we need some help. It's that man, that prideful man that'll roll them sleeves up and coming out of the tater patch and say, I'm going to take care of all of this myself. Hell's going to have a field day with him. But it's the one that'll slip off into the basement. It's the one that'll slip off behind the woodshed and get on its knees and cry out to God and say, God, I'm not able to handle this that's coming against me and my family or whatever this is. I'm not able to handle this temptation. You said in your word that you would offer a way of escape. You'd make a way of escape upon every temptation. God, I'm weak. And I confess that before you this day and I need some help. God, would you help me? Lord, I'm looking for the answers. I'm seeking you day and night. There's things coming into my life. Hell's having a field day, tearing my emotions up. And God, I don't understand it, but God, I'm coming to you. I need wisdom. God, I'm willing to sit before you today in humility and say, God, if I've done something, if I've opened the door to this, God, highlight it so I may confess it, that I may forsake it and get rid of it forever. God, what is it? Put your finger on it. Let me know. Seek God with all of your heart. And I promise you, God will open the door. I promise you that God, many of us don't don't seek Him because we're scared to death of the answer. But in truth and reality is when you find the answer that whom the Son set free, which is Jesus, He will set you free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. That's the whole point of it. Confession is a good thing for the soul and to get real before God. See, we err not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. The Scriptures tell us to humble ourselves and to seek God. Humble yourself and pray. We find that is the great uh, uh, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. It's the answer to a whole nation going bankrupt if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, repent, seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Then God said, I will hear from heaven and I'll heal the land. It's the same way for your family at home. It may be hell's wrecking that thing 90 miles to nothing. Amen. Find yourself a prayer closet. Be a man of prayer. Get on your knees and fight like a man. Amen. Find you a prayer closet. Humble yourself before God. Tell God. Be honest with Him. I don't have the answer. I don't understand everything. God, I've messed up. I've made a mockery. I've made a mess of it. God, I need help. I need grace. I need mercy. I need your forgiveness, God. I need the enemies tearing me up. I've given him inroads into my life. I've given him inroads into my heart. I've given him inroads into my family. I've given him inroads into my marriage, my children, my everything. God, I need help this day. I've you to find that man there, my friend, and you'll find somebody that's about to get an answer from God. You'll find somebody that the answer is on the way, you'll find somebody that has got God's attention and caused God to step over thousands of starving countries and come to that one man. I want to give you this as I'm closing. Kayla's coming to the piano. We're about to pray. I want you to understand, you see, sometimes you need some understanding. Sometimes we just need some knowledge. Sometimes it's a good thing and you get that through the Word of God. You're fighting. You're fighting a terrible battle in your life right now. And you're fighting it tooth and nail. It may be your salvation. It may be you're fighting, struggling, trying to decide if God's even real. If this whole business that I'm screaming about, if there's anything to it. You may be fighting that war. You might be fighting a different kind of war, an addiction. You might be fighting a war in your marriage. You might be fighting a war that's truly life or death. One of your loved ones laid in the hospital. You may be fighting this morning, but understand that you don't understand everything. And lean upon Jesus with every ounce of your being. And here is some more understanding that you and I need to take. Take to heart today in the Word of God in Daniel, the 10th chapter, 
we find a mystery. I do not understand this. You'll find, I want me to read you one right before that. She's going to give me just a second. I want to read this to you in Ephesians 6, and then I'm coming right back to Daniel, the 10th chapter. And I just want you to, this is just some understanding. In Daniel, the 6th chapter, it says in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not yours. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's telling me that there's wiles of the devil that's coming, and I need to be able to stand against that, that it's coming. And it's pulled a many of good men under, and a many of good women has pulled them under and made a mockery of them, and some of them, their names not even remembered no more, let alone what they've done for the Lord, because hell got in and pulled everything down and deceived them. Listen to what he says in verse 12. For we, This is New Testament Bible in verse 12 of chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians and says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I want to reiterate that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. Paul said, I was called up to the third heaven. That tells me that if I understand anything, that there's two more under that. And there's a rim between us and from the high heaven, amen, that Satan, he's the power of prince of the air. We understand that whenever Jesus made this statement, said, I, I, I'm here. And he said, the, the prince of this world, talking about Satan, said, he cometh, but said, he find nothing in me. He's got nothing to work with. There's nothing there. What inside of you are you holding on to? What are your pride, your arrogance? What of that that you're holding on to in your life that needs to be dealt with? that Satan's used and deride you and use. He uses. That's how he gets in. He'll never defeat this thing by hitting it with outright opposition. He'll always join it. He'll always mimic. He's looking for a way in, and 90% of the time how he's got in is through flesh, through unforgiveness. Well, you know why it's so a reality, why it's so serious in the Word of God? Because you're defying the laws of a holy God. When God tells you to get rid of bitterness, God says, I have forgiven you. I have forgiven you of a multi-billion dollar debt. I've taken your sins. You, If you spend an eternity in hell, it would not have paid the sin debt that you owed. And there's nothing you could have ever done. You brought nothing to the table but yet me and my goodness and my grace and my, my, my mercy. I came and your sin and patheticness and everything that you were. I forgave you and made you an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I washed you with the blood. Amen. You're whole. Amen. Brand new in my eyes. And when I look upon you, I do not see the sin that you are, that you had. I buried it beneath the deepest sea. When I look upon you, I'll see my blood of my G. I'll see the sacrificial lamb. Amen. And my righteous indignation will not be kindled unless I smote you beyond the bliss of all eternity. That's the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. And for you to be mad at anybody else for anything you have no right God said unless you forgive from your hearts he said I will not forgive you so if you're holding on to bitterness you're giving the devil an opportunity to get into your life you're giving him an inroad to come in and to work and to pit you against one another and tear things all to pieces and my friends not only will it tear the family down it'll tear the church down not only that it'll tear your children down It'll stop the blessing in the hand of God because you're defiant to God's law. You're defiant to what God told you. God said, I'm a good God. I'm a, I'm a jealous God, but I'm a good God. I'm a holy God, and I'm righteous, and I loved you enough to die for you. I loved you enough to forgive you of all your bitterness. I loved you enough to forgive you of all your iniquity, all of your sin. Do you understand that the Apostle Paul was a murderer by, by, by today's standard? He was a murderer and everything. Else. Look what King David done. But God, look what he done for them. He still loved them and forgive them of their sins. David, here we found King David crying out before God, Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. After he had committed murder and he had an affair with another woman and got her pregnant and he pled with the Lord, please don't take your spirit from me. And yet God was merciful and did not take his spirit from him. He didn't do it. God loved him that much. For God to bestow such matter of love upon you and I, and yet we can't even look at somebody and forgive them. You see, everything else that God, in comparison to what Christ has done for every one of us, in comparison to that to this world, there's nothing They'll even come close. Anything anybody can do to you, when the reality of somebody come in and murdered your whole family, it would pale in comparison to what he has forgiven you of because of the standard of who he is versus who you are. He owed us nothing. He owed us nothing, but yet he gave us everything. And he commands us, be humble. He commands us, forgive 
I don't know why we keep getting back to the bitterness thing. We live in a terrible age, my friends. And that gets in seems to be quicker than anything, but it can be a whole lot of other things too that you're letting in. Some understanding. When you understand, when you understand, if you're in a vehicle and it runs out of gas, I'm not going to have any brakes. You're going to keep a check on the gas tank, correct? When you have that wisdom, when you have that understanding, because you also have the wisdom and you also have the understanding that if I run out of brakes, I may hit somebody and kill somebody or myself. I'm going to do some terrible damage. You see what understanding helps you and I? A good understanding of God's Scripture sometimes can help me bring me back in check. Understanding that, <laughs> whoa, wait, I, I, can I bring this down in, in, in layman's terms, in, in Clayton, Georgia terms? <laughs> I don't know what this sucker here is doing here, but he's mad. I, this is the devil. The devil's got in here somewhere. This is, this is Satan right here. This ain't him. It, that ain't my brother. The devil's, the devil's got in. This is Satan's business here. I can't fight this in the natural. I can't go get my boxing. I can't roll up my sleeve. It's going to do no good if we beat each other's brains out. I've got to understand what this is. This is hell fighting. Somehow or another, the devil's got in here. That's my brother there, and I love him, or whoever it is. I, I love them, and Satan's just got in this thing, and he's tearing them all to pieces, and he's trying to get in me and tear me all to pieces so we can fight together because while we're sitting here fighting amongst ourselves and mad at one another, he can slip in other ways and tear everything else down. I watched a video, and that I, I, I followed the concealed weapon carry thing, and uh, I was watching a video, a training video, where a man, they're talking about just avoid road rage was the whole thing. Don't, if somebody honks, just forget, just go on. And you would be so surprised at how much road rage goes on now that people lose their lives on account of something very stupid. And here's what hit me. I watched a video of a man got so mad at somebody on the road over something stupid. They wind up pulling over. They get out, and one guy pulls a gun and shoots him and kills him because he's so mad. And here you've got one daddy. He's going to prison for the rest of his life. And you've got another daddy that's not going home. But here's what nobody sees. Satan's standing on the corner laughing the whole time, saying, I got him. I played him like a fool. You're driving down the interstate and you've got some wisdom. That's the devil. That's the devil trying to get in here. I think I'm going to veer off right here and take me a rest stop and pray a few minutes. This is Satan trying to get in here and tear me up and tear my family up. This is Satan right here and he's up to no good. You learn to appear from all appearances of evil. You, 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 you'll decide to go. You, you decide to, when you, I'm talking about wisdom. I'm talking about getting some wisdom. See, we err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. When you've got some... Now I want to give you some wisdom before you pray. In the book of Daniel, and I'm closing after this. Here was Daniel that laid before the Lord. Daniel was seeking God with all of his heart. Daniel was on the Daniel fast, and he was seeking. This is what your Bible says. I, I do not claim to understand this, but you need to realize this is a reality that we're in. In verse, I'll pick it up in verse 10. Chapter 10, verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me. And he set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. See, Daniel was laid out seeking the Lord. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken the word unto me, I stood up trembling. O Daniel, you've been seeking. O Daniel, you've been praying. Oh, Daniel, you've been praying. 21 long days, Daniel, you've been praying. Laid out before me, and you're fasting, and you're praying, and you're seeking. And Daniel, here I am. The answer is in front of you. Here I am. I've come to give you wisdom. I've come to give you knowledge. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy word. The very first day, what was the hindrance? I need some understanding. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, many scholars believe that that was Satan himself. I'm not sure. I'm not smart enough to know it. But I just know what the word of God says. It says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. 
But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. And now I am come to make thee understand. 21 days it was withstood. Now, what of that do I understand? Nothing. But I need some wisdom, and I need some understanding that I may be going through the battle of my life. I can't understand it. I can't see it. It don't make no sense, but it's real. And they don't nobody else. I'm in a warfare that maybe your spouse will never even fully understand it. Maybe you're in a place and you're walking all by yourself. And they do not understand, nor will they ever understand the warfare that you're going through. And the hell and the torment that you're going through in your mind and in your heart. And the stuff that the enemy puts in your mind while you're trying to sleep. And you go to bed so tired that you can't, can't hardly stand it, but yet you still can't sleep. Maybe nobody understands understands that but Jesus does but Jesus does and maybe you're praying and you ain't got no answer but I promise you the very moment you set your heart to God he heard it the very moment I don't understand all that in between how that it was how it was hindered but one of these days whenever I get to the by and by I've got lots of questions but for the here and now I've got to walk by faith for right now, I've got to walk by faith. I said, for right now, I've got to walk by faith. And I've got to understand, though I don't feel like my answer is come and I don't understand it, I've got to understand that it's on the way. I've just got to keep myself in a position before God. I've got to rise up in maturity and get off of the bottle and get off of the breast milk and understand that my Father is preparing a meal before me. And when it's get ready for me to eat, it'll be there. Amen. All I've got to do is trust Him and wait completely and totally upon Him and not let the devil wreck my faith and tear me all to pieces. Sometimes all you can do is be still and know that he is God. It don't feel like worshiping. It don't sound like worshiping. You can't even hardly pray. I come to a place one day in my life, I was hit by the devil. I've never been here. I was disobedient to God. God taught me a lesson. I went to another church and wasn't supposed to go. It nearly put me out of this thing. Yes, sir, nearly put me. Can I tell you some truth? My wife looked at me one Sunday morning and said, if you don't get up and take these babies to church, she said, I am. I was a preacher and decided I wasn't going no more. Yes, sir. And there for a while, all I could pray was, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's all. I could, my, my, my prayers seemed like I couldn't get nowhere. I was in the greatest storm of my life. I thought I was losing terribly, but I held on. Can I tell you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You need some understanding of how God's kingdom works and how things work in reality according to the word of God. And when you get some understanding, you realize that maybe you're on the darkest sea of your life and you're holding on and you're praying and nothing's happening. You're seeking and nothing's happening. But I just read you of a man. The word of God said that as soon as you set your heart, God heard you. And when his answer came by that angelic being, he said, but the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. Maybe the devil don't want you to get no victory. Maybe, I'm going to tell you this, maybe if you had a little wisdom, you would understand that if you're in the fight of your life and hell's fighting your answer that's coming from God, maybe you're right. Maybe he's afraid of you. Maybe he's trying to put you out of business because he knows you're a threat to his kingdom. Maybe that's the reason hell's after you. Maybe you're on its top ten wanted list. Maybe God's got a calling. God's got a purpose. Maybe God's got something big for you to do for Him. And hell's trying to snuff you out of this thing before it ever gets started. See, some good wisdom and good understanding will help you and go a long way. Some of us, we need some understanding. We need some wisdom. There's things that are rocket science to me. But it's a but small thing to the Lord. The Bible said that if you have not... You have not because you ask not. I said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Let him ask. And God would give it to him liberally. Are you ready to ask God for wisdom? Are you ready to take a deep breath and say, God, I don't understand the war that I've been fighting. It don't make no sense to me. I don't understand this. But I refuse to give in. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give any more ground to, this, to Satan, to the devil. But God, by faith, I'm going to stand. Having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. And God, I'm asking you, 
to give me the revelation that I need and the understanding of your word to get through what I need to. Father, I pray for the ones that's watching. I pray, God, that you'll touch them. I pray, God, that if they're seeking wisdom, that you'll grant their request. I pray, God, you'll strengthen them this morning and help them to stand no matter whatever they're facing. Those of you that are watching, get busy with Jesus. Because if you don't, some people are telling me they're not going to church now because it's summertime. They've taken off some time. But my only response to that is the devil's not took off any time. The devil's more faithful than most anybody in this church. He's there every time. I want to encourage you, those that are watching this thing, to get serious and get busy with Jesus. And get on your face and seek God with all of your heart. And make it your business to know His Word. Make it your business to get a hold of Him. Make it your business to get wisdom and get understanding above everything else. That you can understand His will. It'll help you and go a long way. It'll knock the frustration out of a whole lot of stuff in your life. Whenever you're trying to fix something up there in the shop, if I just got a little understanding of how this thing operates, I, I, I can fix it. I can put it back together. I can fix, but when I have, don't have no understanding, maybe you don't understand this morning what you're going through. Get some understanding. Understand you've got an adversary and he's coming after you. When you understand that, it helps a whole lot. Get in his words. Seek him. Appreciate you watching.